Okay, so for the invisible zip, I've got two rectangles of calico that are approximately 30 centimeters by 10. And I've got a, I might just check the length of that, 25 centimeter invisible zip. So the first thing we have to do, so this section here is where our zip is going to be sewn. So the first thing we're going to do is overlock these two raw edges. Okay, so there are my two edges overlocked and I've got the right side of the overlocking stitch facing upwards. That's the right side. That's the wrong side. It looks loopier. Now when you do an invisible zip, when you purchase a zip, you always have to purchase it longer than you want the zip opening. We need a bit of excess zip, usually about five centimeters to be able to stitch the zip in place and turn it through. It'll make sense once I do it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to mark a couple things. First thing I'm going to mark is the one centimeter from the top. So one centimetre from the top. I'm just going to roll that in because that's where I want the top of my zip to finish. And then from that point down, I'm going to mark 20 centimetre point. Because my zip is a 25 centimetre zip. So I'm going to have a 20 centimeter opening. Now when you work out the opening for your zip, you work that out and then you buy a zip that suits that opening. So if you worked out for your dress you wanted a 50 centimeter zip, you would purchase a 55 centimeter zip or longer. We can always cut zips shorter, we can't make them longer though. Okay, so we'll move on to looking at the zip. So looking at the invisible zip, it has a special function where the teeth are hidden. So let's have a look. And how that works is the teeth roll back. Okay. So they roll back and that allows us to enclose this zip virtually in a seam. So if you look here, the zip is closed, you can't see any teeth. But once it's open and you turn it around, you can see these teeth here, they roll open and then they roll back. So that's really important for our technique to sew our zip in place. Now at the top of the zip, you've got your zip heads here and here. And at the bottom, you also have a, zip, a plastic zip head. Normally these are metal, but because it's invisible, they're a lot finer. So to begin with, we unzip our zip all the way. Now this is the right side of the zip. This is the wrong side with the teeth visible. So what we need to do is we need to put a right side against a right side of our fabric like that. So the edge of our zip tape should line up with the edge of our overlocking. And the top of our teeth here should line up with that line we did. So it should sit just below that mark. You see that right there. A little pin cushion thing here. All right. So I'm going to pin that in place. Now the reason why we did that mark is because we've got one centimeter seam allowance here. So once that is folded in with our waistband or whatever we're going to finish that edge with, the zip should finish right at the top. Now if you move the zip along, We've got our mark here, which is where we're going to start. 
Generally, I don't pin anything in place. But for you guys, I'm just going to pop a couple pins. In place just to hold that zip in place just make sure when you pin it you keep those edges lined up and make sure they're both nice and flat and they sit together well okay so for this part we're going to start from this end where our mark is here. I can't really see that, so I'm just going to draw it a little bit longer so I can see it there. But before we can start, we actually have to change, change our presser foot. So there's a little button at the back here. Press it in and drop that off. And we're going to put on this one, a zipper foot. So this is a invisible zip foot. You've got these grooves here. So you unroll that those zipper teeth and that sits in the grooves when you sew. It's a little bit hard to get on. And then you just drop down a presser foot, click it in place. I'm also going to put my needle down just so I can get my thread in the bottom there. Because I want my thread to come out through this hole and out the back. So once I'm ready, I can line up my zip with my edge. And at that point here, that's where I want my needle to go in. But before I do that, I want to open my teeth so they roll out so that rolls out and that part there sits it's a little bit tricky sits right in that groove can you see here it's not quite lined up i'm just going to readjust that I can see my mark here, so I'm going to put my needle in, in line with that. All right, so now to hold, stitch this in place, you're going to use one fingertip here to hold those zipper teeth out. So you're going to roll them back and keep them lined up with that part there. So we'll do a reverse stitch. Hold this with your right hand so it's nice and flat. And then with my left index finger, I'm going to roll those teeth out and I'm going to keep that little part of the zipper foot in line with, it's a little bit hard to see, but if I look on this side, see there, that kind of line there, we're going to line it up with that. So stop. Take out your pins, keep going. Keeping that open. To the end of the fabric, do a reverse. So you can see here the teeth would have rolled back into position, but if I open that, I can see my stitch line in there. And then trim your threads. And if I zip up my zip, I shouldn't be able to see any of that side of the zip there if I'm stitched in the right position. Right, now 
unzip it all the way down and we'll look at preparing the other side. Get that cord out of the way. Okay, so I've got this side where I've sewn my zip. So that was the right side of the zip against the right side of the fabric. So what that means is this part, oops, I'll just move the camera, sorry. This underside of the zip is the right side. So what we're gonna have to do is grab that and twist it around so it lines up the zipper tape with the overlocking and then the zipper teeth are here and that's the right side facing. So we know it's the wrong side because the teeth are visible. The right side, the teeth aren't visible. So let's do that again. So it's flat. Underneath here is the right side. So we're going to grab that and twist it over to our other side. Okay, so again, we're going to line up the top of our teeth here just below our mark for our seam allowance. But what we've got to do here to make sure our zip's going to line up, I'm going to close this. struggling a little bit okay that got a bit tricky trying to work out how to close it because you've done that twist it does get a bit confusing so here where I finished stitching the zip I want to mark that on that side so just with a pin oops this one we're going to put a pin there at that point okay then unzip it Way. and then we're ready to sew so what that pin should do is that pin should line up with our mark we made so that's important to make sure those two parts line up so I'm not going to pin this just at the top there I will and Again, I want my thread through the hole at the bottom here. And I want to open that, the teeth. But we're going to start at the start. And what we need to do is we need to grab those threads to pull it through. We grab those threads at the back to get it started. Do your reverse. Take your pin out. And then go back to opening up those teeth. So rolling them back. And making sure that that part lines up in the groove from where the teeth fold over. Now I'm going to just stop there. And bring this back because I need to make sure these two line up. So my pin here and my mark need to line up. So I'm just going to... Take that out. So that's where the mark was there. And then I'm just going to pin them so those two line up. Okay, and then I can continue sewing. So you're keeping the edge against the overlocking edge. Rolling that back and pulling my fabric, pinching it here and pulling it so it's nice and straight like that. Now when I get to this part here, I'm going to roll that out and I'm going to go as far as I can and then I'm just going to real carefully pull that pin out. Oops. 
don't want to take it out all the way though. I just want to take it out so I can see that spot where I need to stop. And then using the hand wheel, I'm going to do a couple more stitches until my needle and my pin, I just need to go back a little bit, line up. Okay. Then I can do a little reverse stitch there. All right, so that should be your two sides are attached now. So I should be able to zip that up. Let's get rid of these loose threads. I'm going to cut these loose ends off here. Now I should be able to zip that up. And you can see there that I've stitched that really well. You shouldn't be able to see the zip. I mean, you can pull it apart and of course you'll see it if you put some pressure on there, but you shouldn't be able to see it. And here, those two points meet pretty well. So now what I have to do is stitch up this seam. So I'm going to unzip it. Come back to the machine and change my foot over again. So just that little button at the back, pop that off, put my normal foot back on, and I can stitch up that seam. So it is a little bit tricky, this part, because you need to stitch so that your stitch line almost meets this one here. But that point there, and that point on the back have to be lined up really well. So let's have a go. Sometimes you have to do this part a couple times and that's okay. So you're gonna line up with the one line. And just start stitching. And when I get close, what I can do, I'm just gonna get a little bit closer. Make sure my edges are lined up. I can stop and I can use a pin. And I can put a pin through that point to see where it comes out. Ideally, the pin comes out at the bottom of the stitch line here. Now it doesn't, so I need to adjust that bottom layer over a little bit and try again. No, it's not coming through. So you have to get the zip out of the way. All right, so if you look there, that comes out the same spot. Excellent, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin that position in place. I'm gonna pull my zip out the way and I'm gonna aim to meet this stitch line, but I don't have to like touch it. I can be a couple stitches away when I finish. I need to like just help it through a little bit here. I think that's close enough, so I'm gonna do a reverse stitch there. Trim your threads. Okay. So hopefully when we do up our zip, it's nice and neatly finished and in line with our seam here. So to do up our zip, now this is why you need the extra length. You have to go through and grab your zip head, grab the bottom of your zip and pull the two together. And you can see there, you've got a really nice finish. Now the next step to do is to iron this. So I'm gonna go iron that and then I'll bring it back. Okay, so I've ironed that. And what I did to iron that, I ironed this seam allowance open and I gave it a really good iron on top. So you can see 
The zip is virtually invisible. There's just a little mark there from when we marked it. Now on the back, there's one more step. We need to anchor this zip end to our seam allowance. Yeah. And that will help keep that in place, but it also help when you go to do up and undo your zip by anchor, anchoring it there. All right, so on the machine, what you do is you have that flat, you have your zip so it sits in the middle, and then you're gonna pinch your zip and your seam allowance only and fold that back. You do a little reverse stitch just on those two layers on each side to anchor your zip in place. Again, the other side, so pinch the two together and then fold the fabric out of the way and then stitch that there. So there we have our invisible zip anchored at the bottom just to our seam allowance. So that's done.